The astral plane, also called the astral realm or the astral world, is a plane of existence postulated by classical, medieval, oriental, and esoteric philosophies and mystery religions. It is the world of the celestial spheres, crossed by the soul and its astral body on the way to being born and after death, and is generally believed to be populated by angels, spirits, or other immaterial beings. In the late 19th and early 20th century the term was popularized by Theosophy and Neo-Rosicrucianism. Another view holds that the astral plane or world, rather than being some kind of boundary area crossed by the soul, is the entirety of spirit existence or spirit worlds to which those who die on earth go, and where they live out their non-physical lives. It is understood that all consciousness resides in the astral plane. Some writers conflate this realm with heaven or paradise or union with God itself, and others do not. Paramahansa Yogananda wrote an autobiography of a yogi, the astral universe, is hundreds of times larger than the material universe, with many astral planets, teeming with astral beings. The world of Algab, and the world of Barzak, are related concepts in Islam, also the concept of Alam al-Mithal, or imaginal world in Sufism. In Judaism, it is known as the world of Yetzera, according to Lurianic Kabbalah. The energetic or astral level is a dimension of reality that is subtler than the physical level. It is often associated with the realm of energy, emotions, thoughts, and subtle vibrations. Plato and Aristotle taught that the stars were composed of a type of matter different from the classical four earthly elements a fifth, ethereal element or quintessence. In the astral mysticism of the classical world the human psyche was composed of the same material, thus accounting for the influence of the stars upon human affairs. In his commentaries on Plato's Timaeus, Proclus wrote the following. Man is a little world, Micros Cosmos. For, just like the whole, he possesses both mind and reason, both a divine and a moral body. He is also divided up according to the universe. It is for this reason, you know, that some are accustomed to say that his consciousness corresponds with the nature of the fixed stars, his reason in its contemplative aspect with Saturn and in its social aspect with Jupiter, and, as to his irrational part, the passionate nature with Mars, the eloquent with Mercury, the appetitive with Venus, the sensitive with the Sun and the vegetative with the Moon. Such doctrines were commonplace in mystery schools and hermetic and Gnostic sects throughout the Roman Empire. Among Muslims the astral worldview was soon rendered orthodox by Quranic references to the Prophet's ascent through the seven heavens. Scholars took up the Greek Neoplatonist accounts as well as similar material in Hindu and Zoroastrian texts. The expositions of Ibn Sina, the Brotherhood of Purity and others, when translated into Latin in the Norman era, were to have a profound effect upon European medieval alchemy and astrology. By the 14th century Dante was describing his own imaginary journey through the astral spheres of paradise. Throughout the Renaissance, philosophers, Paracelsians, Rosicrucians, and alchemists continued to discuss the nature of the astral world intermediate between Earth and the Divine. Once the telescope established that no spiritual heaven was visible around the solar system, the idea was superseded in mainstream science. These subtle energies that underlie and permeate the physical world. These energies are believed to be vital forces that animate and shape all aspects of existence. They can be seen as the underlying currents of life and consciousness. The astral level is closely associated with emotions, feelings, and the energetic expressions of human experiences. It is believed that emotions generate energetic vibrations that can be sensed and perceived on the energetic or astral level. The astral realm is considered the domain where emotions and desires find their expression and influence our experiences. According to various occult teachings, the astral plane can be visited consciously through astral projection, meditation and mantra, near-death experience, lucid dreaming, or other means. Individuals that are trained in the use of the astral vehicle can separate their consciousness in the astral vehicle from the physical body at will. 
the first stage in development, according to William Walker Atkinson, also known as Yogi Ramakaraka, is the mastery of the physical body and its care and attention, which pertains not only to the physical body but also to its double in the astral. In addition, one must spend time tuning the instinctive mind. The first three subdivisions of the instinctive mind are passions, desires, and lusts. The second stage is the intellect, otherwise known as the sharpening of the mind. Someone operating largely out of the instinctive mind would have only a glimmering of intellect, therefore those who are centered in the intellect would only have an inkling of the spiritual. Once both stages are completed the spiritual mind can be awakened. Thought Forms and Mental Constructs Thought forms and mental constructs are concepts that relate to the realm of thoughts, ideas, and the power of the mind. They are associated with the energetic or astral level and can influence our experiences and interactions. Telepathic and intuitive communication are modes of communication that go beyond conventional verbal or physical means, involving the transmission and reception of information through energetic or intuitive channels. Thought forms are believed to be energetic counterparts or manifestations of our thoughts. Every thought we generate is said to have an associated energetic form on the astral or energetic level. These thought forms can carry the intention, emotional charge, and information associated with the thought. Thought forms can influence our perception and experience of reality. They are believed to shape our beliefs, attitudes, and behaviors. For example, positive and empowering thought forms can contribute to a sense of confidence and well-being, while negative or limiting thought forms can create barriers and challenges. Thought forms can also have a collective dimension. When multiple individuals share similar thoughts, beliefs, or intentions, a collective thought form may emerge. These collective thought forms can have a more potent impact on the collective consciousness and can shape cultural or societal patterns and behaviors. Telepathic and Intuitive Communication Telepathic communication involves the direct transmission of thoughts, ideas, or emotions from one individual to another without the use of conventional physical means. It is believed to occur on the energetic or astral level bypassing the limitations of verbal language. Telepathy can occur between individuals who share a strong energetic or emotional connection. Intuitive communication involves the reception of information, insights, or understanding without the reliance on logical reasoning or sensory perception. It is often associated with accessing deeper levels of awareness or connecting to higher knowledge or guidance. Intuition can provide a direct knowing or understanding that goes beyond rational analysis. Telepathic and intuitive communication are facilitated by energetic resonance and attunement. When individuals are in a state of alignment, openness, and receptivity, they may pick up on the energetic signals and information being transmitted by others or higher realms. Some individuals actively develop and refine their telepathic and intuitive communication abilities through practices such as meditation, energy work, and intuitive exercises. These practices aim to enhance sensitivity, clarity, and discernment in perceiving and interpreting energetic or intuitive information. While telepathy and intuitive communication are subjects of interest and exploration, their existence and effectiveness are still debated and not universally accepted in scientific or mainstream contexts. However, many individuals report personal experiences and anecdotal evidence supporting these phenomena. Developing an awareness of thought forms and mental constructs can empower individuals to recognize and transform limiting patterns of thought and belief. Cultivating intuitive and telepathic abilities can deepen connections, foster empathy, and expand channels of communication beyond traditional means. Non-Physical Entities and Beings Non-physical entities and beings are often associated with the realms beyond the physical level of reality. They are believed to exist on energetic or spiritual planes and are considered separate from physical beings. These entities are often encountered or perceived in various esoteric, 
mystical, and spiritual traditions. Spiritual guides and guardians. Non-physical entities are sometimes referred to as spiritual guides, guardians, or helpers. They are believed to offer guidance, support, and protection to individuals on their spiritual journey. These beings are thought to possess higher knowledge, wisdom, and a broader perspective on life. Elementals Elementals are non-physical entities associated with the natural elements, earth, air, fire, and water. They are believed to be sentient beings that embody and represent the elemental forces of nature. For example, gnomes are associated with earth, sylphs with air, salamanders with fire, and undines with water. Ancestral spirits Ancestral spirits are believed to be the non-physical entities of deceased individuals who have crossed over to the spirit realm. They are often considered to have a continued presence and can offer guidance, protection, and support to their living descendants. Ancestral spirits are honored and communicated within various cultural and spiritual practices. Astral projectors and consciousness explorers Astral projection refers to the intentional separation of the consciousness from the physical body, allowing individuals to explore non-physical realms. During such experiences, individuals may encounter non-physical entities or beings, both positive and negative. These encounters can offer insights, teachings, or challenges. Interacting with non-physical entities can be a part of spiritual practices and personal growth. Engaging with spiritual guides or ancestral spirits can offer guidance, wisdom, and support on one's spiritual path. These interactions can foster a sense of connection to the unseen realms and contribute to personal transformation. Non-physical entities, such as spirit guides, can offer protection and assistance in clearing negative energies or entities from one's energetic field. Practices like energy clearing, cord cutting, or calling upon protective guides can help maintain energetic boundaries and promote well-being. Non-physical entities are often invoked and honored in rituals and ceremonies. They can be called upon for assistance, blessings, or to establish a connection with the spiritual realms. These practices provide a framework for communication and co-creation with the non-physical realm. Non-physical entities can be encountered during mystical experiences or explorations of consciousness. These encounters can expand one's understanding of the nature of reality, consciousness, and the interconnectedness of all things. It is important to approach encounters with non-physical entities with discernment, respect, and a clear intention for positive and beneficial interactions. Personal beliefs and cultural contexts play a significant role in shaping the understanding and interpretation of these entities. Different traditions may have specific practices, rituals, and guidelines for engaging with non-physical entities based on their respective beliefs and cosmologies. Lucid Dreaming and Astral Projection Lucid dreaming and astral projection are practices and experiences that involve altered states of consciousness and the exploration of realms beyond the physical plane. Lucid dreaming refers to the state of being aware that one is dreaming while still within the dream. It is a state of heightened self-awareness and consciousness during the dream state. In a lucid dream, the dreamer becomes conscious of the dream as it unfolds and can sometimes exert a degree of control over the dream environment and narrative. The hallmark of lucid dreaming is the awareness that one is dreaming. This awareness enables the dreamer to consciously navigate and interact with the dream environment. It can involve controlling dream elements, summoning specific experiences or individuals, or exploring the dream realm with intention. Lucid dreaming often involves heightened sensory perception. Colors may appear more vibrant, sounds more vivid, and tactile sensations more palpable. This heightened perception can contribute to a rich and immersive dream experience. Lucid dreaming provides an opportunity for personal exploration, self-reflection, and creative expression. Dreamers can engage in activities like problem-solving, artistic creation, or encountering symbolic representations of their subconscious mind. 
lucid dreaming can be used as a tool for personal growth, healing, and emotional integration. Dreamers can confront fears, work through unresolved issues, or engage in practices that promote self-empowerment and transformation. Astral projection, also known as out-of-body experience, OBE, is the phenomenon where an individual's consciousness separates from the physical body and enters different realms or planes of existence. It is believed that during astral projection, the consciousness can travel beyond the physical body and explore non-physical dimensions. Astral projection involves the separation of the consciousness from the physical body. The individual's awareness is able to exist and perceive independently from the physical form. During astral projection, individuals can explore realms beyond the physical plane. These realms may include the astral plane, spiritual dimensions, or even encounters with non-physical entities or beings. Astral projection can be accompanied by a heightened sense of perception, expanded consciousness, and the ability to navigate through space and time. Individuals may experience a greater sense of freedom and connection to the broader cosmos. Astral projection experiences can provide profound spiritual insights, experiences of unity, and a deeper understanding of the nature of reality. It can facilitate personal growth, self-discovery, and a sense of connection to the larger tapestry of existence. Both lucid dreaming and astral projection offer various practical applications and benefits, including Lucid dreaming and astral projection provide unique opportunities for self-exploration, personal growth, and expanding one's understanding of consciousness and reality. These practices can enhance creativity and artistic expression. Exploring dreamscapes and non-physical realms can inspire new ideas, insights, and artistic creations. Lucid dreaming can be utilized for problem-solving, rehearsing skills, and practicing new behaviors. Astral projection experiences can offer insights and knowledge beyond what is accessible in the physical realm. Both practices can facilitate spiritual and mystical experiences, connecting individuals with deeper aspects of their being and the spiritual dimensions of existence. It's important to approach lucid dreaming and astral projection with respect, proper preparation, and guidance when needed. While they can offer transformative experiences, it's crucial to prioritize safety, self-care, and maintaining a grounded connection to physical reality. Psychic and Intuitive Development Psychic and intuitive development refers to the cultivation and refinement of one's innate psychic and intuitive abilities. It involves expanding one's awareness beyond the limitations of the five physical senses and tapping into subtler levels of information, perception, and knowing. Psychic and intuitive abilities are believed to provide access to insights, knowledge, and guidance that go beyond conventional logic and reasoning. Developing psychic and intuitive abilities begins with cultivating awareness and sensitivity to subtle energies, impressions, and information. This involves becoming attuned to the energetic vibrations, emotions, thoughts, and sensations present in one's environment and within oneself. Intuition is the ability to access knowledge, insights, and understanding without conscious reasoning or analysis. It involves tapping into a deeper level of knowing that arises from the subconscious mind or the higher self. Developing intuition requires trust, receptivity, and the ability to discern intuitive guidance from other mental or emotional influences. Extrasensory perception ESP, refers to the ability to perceive information or events beyond the scope of the physical senses. This includes clairvoyance, clear seeing, clear audience, clear hearing, clear sentience, clear feeling, and other forms of psychic perception. Developing ESP involves honing and refining these psychic senses through practice and intention. Psychic and intuitive development often involves working with energetic principles and practices. This includes sensing and manipulating subtle energy, understanding the energy body and chakras, and exploring energy healing modalities. 
developing an awareness of energy can enhance intuitive abilities and facilitate healing and energetic balance. Psychic and intuitive development can provide valuable insights into one's own thoughts, emotions, and patterns. It allows for self-reflection, self-awareness, and personal growth by shedding light on subconscious motivations, hidden beliefs, and unresolved emotions. Psychic and intuitive abilities can be utilized to gain clarity, guidance, and perspective when making decisions or solving problems. By accessing intuitive insights, individuals can tap into a broader range of information and consider factors beyond logical analysis. Psychic and intuitive development can enhance connections with others. It can facilitate empathic understanding, deeper communication, and the ability to perceive and respond to the needs and emotions of others. Developing psychic and intuitive abilities can support spiritual exploration and connection. It can deepen one's understanding of the spiritual dimensions of existence, facilitate contact with spiritual guides or higher realms, and open doors to mystical experiences. Developing psychic and intuitive abilities requires practice, patience, and an open mind. It is important to approach this journey with ethical considerations, respect for boundaries, and discernment. Seeking guidance from experienced practitioners, teachers, or mentors can provide valuable support and direction in developing these skills. Ultimately, psychic and intuitive development can be a powerful tool for personal growth, spiritual connection, and navigating the complexities of life. In early theosophical literature the term astral may refer to the ether. Later theosophical authors such as Annie Besant and C. W. Leadbeater make the astral finer than the etheric plane, but denser than the mental plane. In order to create a unified view of seven bodies, and remove earlier Sanskrit terms, an etheric plane was introduced and the term astral body was used to replace the former Kamarupa, or sometimes termed the body of emotion, illusion or desire. Some of those propounding such claims explain their belief that letting go of desires is spiritual progress by noting that, the more one lets go of earthly desire feelings, the less tied down to the physical world, a world of illusion, and the more connected to the astral, where all is visible and known. According to Max Handel's Rosicrucian writings, desire stuff may be described as a type of force matter, in incessant motion, responsive to the slightest feeling. The desire world is also said to be the abode of the dead for some time subsequent to death. It is also the home of the archangels. In the higher regions of the desire world thoughts take a definite form and color perceptible to all, all is light and there is but one long day. In his book Autobiography of a Yogi, Paramahansa Yogananda provides details about the astral planes learned from his guru. Yogananda claims that nearly all individuals enter the astral planes after death. There they work out the seeds of past karma through astral incarnations, or, if their karma requires, they return to earthly incarnations for further refinement. Once an individual has attained the meditative state of Nirvakalpa Samadhi in an earthy or astral incarnation, the soul may progress upward to the illumined astral planet of Hiranyaloka. After this transitional stage, the soul may then move upward to the more subtle causal spheres where many more incarnations allow them to further refine before final unification.